when EA's Madden titles transitioned from the 6th generation of consoles to the 7th, you know, the Xbox 360 and PS3, it wasn't pretty. The first next-gen title, Madden 06, was really bad. Madden 07 and 08 were also pretty rough, but at least they were improvements. While the 6th generation versions of those games were actually great, the PS3 and 360 versions just felt incomplete despite looking prettier. Many features and game modes were missing due to EA starting over during the previously mentioned console transition. It wasn't until Madden 09 that the 7th gen titles started to stand on their own. And that brings us to Madden 10. Was Madden 10 a great game? No. It had a lot of issues, some bugs, exploitable gameplay that leaned more towards the arcade side than Madden games usually did, and it planted the seeds for a hyper-monetized future. Its franchise mode and superstar mode may not be as deep as older Maddens, but they were still deep enough. While back in 2009 people may have been unhappy with a game that felt worse than older titles, it really wasn't that bad, at least with hindsight. Compared to Madden 22, Madden 10 had a deeper franchise mode, a better career mode, and, in my opinion, more fun gameplay. If Madden 08 on the PS2, Xbox, PC, or GameCube was the last great Madden, and Madden 12 was the last good Madden, then Madden 10 kind of sits in the middle. It was good enough, but flawed. As a kid, one of my friends had Madden 10, and I'd go to his house to play it. I remember being blown away by the graphics and presentation. The scoreboard looked so similar to the NBC one at the time. Chris Collinsworth was an announcer, and I thought that was really cool, even though he constantly repeated his lines in the game. Players on the sideline would be shown picking up a phone, hyping each other up, and more. The helmet reflections, metallic paint finish, jersey textures, shading, and the player faces looked incredible to me. And just looking now, even in 2022, You've got to agree that this game still looks pretty. I love how natural the grass looks and how the stadiums and stands look. This game just had an excellent vibe, and of course, today it may not be as impressive, but to a 10 year old, this game was magical. Now that I'm nearly 23 and running this YouTube channel, however, it's time to remove those nostalgia goggles and talk about Madden 10 for what it really was. A mediocre Madden title that you could argue was the beginning of the end. It's obvious that there was care put into the overall presentation of the game. From the opening cinematic, to the down sign loading screens, Madden 10 was visually exciting. Refs will debate calls, players will be shown yelling at each other on the sidelines, and there would even be fake sponsorships for Snickers and Sprint to really make the game feel like a true broadcast. It really did feel like an extension of NFL football, at least how you see it on TV. The game even had a somewhat decent halftime show called The Extra Point. But compared to ESPN NFL 2K5, it was pretty lacking. Once the actual gameplay began, the game didn't feel as special. Sure, the gameplay was fun, and it still is fun, but it just felt clunky. Today, it really does feel aged, especially when compared to a game like All Pro Football 2K8 or Backbreaker, a game that released just one year later. Despite its overall awkwardness, it was still pretty decent for its time, enough so for IGN to call it fantastic and gush over how realistic it was, as if the reviewer had never touched a 2K football game. Some new features included Fight for the Fumble, a button mashing sequence that played out after a, you guessed it, fumble. While fun, especially when playing with a friend, it did give the game an arcade-style vibe which was frustrating when the game was advertised as the only simulation NFL game. The game was also incredibly easy, at least for me. Deep passes were hard to come by due to an issue that's always plagued and still plagues Madden games, low ball trajectory. Deep passes are usually always swatted down, and it feels nearly impossible to drop a pass over the defense in the bucket. But everything else just feels super easy. On All Pro, I can easily put up 70 or more points in a game. All Madden is more challenging, but not by enough. Slants, ins, and runs are very easy to master, and the CPU AI is really stupid. I will say, however, the gameplay did look pretty good. Tackle animations were decent thanks to a new procedural tackling system called ProTac. It allowed for gang tackles, huge pileups on top of a loose ball, a more naturally forming pocket, better blocking, and more, which helped create a more realistic product, at least visually. 
The physics even allowed for quarterbacks to throw out of sacks, resulting in wobbly underthrows. You know, the new feature added to Madden 21 after Madden 20 didn't allow it. Where Madden 10 stands strong is within its depth. Of course, when the game originally released, it was actually criticized for lacking depth. But coming from recent Madden titles, it's not hard to be impressed. Franchise mode was still really good in Madden 10. While the schedule was gone and the ability to practice drills with specific players was gone, you could still import a created team, play the Pro Bowl, hire and promote licensed coordinators, create a new stadium down to the field art, and more. It wasn't as deep as, say, Madden 07 on the PS2, but it was way deeper than anything after Madden 12. Superstar mode is decent in Madden 10, although the game removed minicamp drills, which was one of my favorite parts. Besides that, however, it was a simple career mode where you could play as any position, which may not sound like much, but again, since Madden 12, that hasn't been an option. The game still had create a team, which allowed you to create any team you wanted. You can name it anything you wanted, choose whatever colors you wanted, build whatever type of stadium you wanted, and watch as your creation came to life on the field. Madden 10 chose to focus on adding some new online game modes, including an innovative new online franchise mode, which I was actually unaware of before replaying this game. Of course, servers are now down, so I can't start the mode, but according to reviews from 2009, it allowed you to play with 31 other players in a league with the exact same features and options as the offline franchise mode. So basically, Madden 10 already had connected franchise, so, why exactly did Madden 13 have to poorly recreate the entire mode? My favorite game mode, however, has to be Madden Moments. Why EA stopped including this in their games, I have no idea. But recreating moments from NFL history is one of the most fun video game experiences I've ever had. This is what video games were created for, allowing us to do the impossible, such as relive or even change history. And now we get to Ultimate Team, the most interesting part of revisiting this game to me. This was the first Madden title to get the game mode. Of course, at the time, it simply appeared to be an evolution of Madden cards. You would earn coins by playing through any of the game modes, but there was a new second way to earn coins, by buying them with a credit card. You could use coins to buy packs of virtual trading cards and then build a team to play others online with those cards. While the mode wasn't considered anything nefarious back then, I'm sure many would have predicted that it would eventually be the only game mode EA would market to new players. Franchise mode was still the obvious flagship game mode, but the seeds of the future were planted. You could honestly argue that this was EA's most important Madden game, because the success of the Ultimate Team experiment has led to billions of dollars in profit for the company, despite leaving consumers worse off. Ever since acquiring the exclusive NFL license, EA's only motive has seemed to be profit. Ultimate Team only helped solidify that strategy. Madden 11 was a slight improvement upon 10, and 12 was another solid entry. And what I like to call the last good Madden. Because after Madden 12, things changed. I have a video going over Madden 13, the game that replaced the classic franchise and superstar modes with one new worse mode. Create a team, create a stadium, and other customization options were completely removed. Gameplay got better, but at the cost of depth, and a few years later gameplay would regress to an all-time low, so it didn't even matter. Unfortunately, after the success and financial potential of Ultimate Team, franchise mode, career mode, simulation gameplay, customization, and other staples of the series were forgotten. Back in 2009, people were starting to get fed up with Madden. EA had been holding the exclusive NFL license for 5 years at that point, yet many diehard players still felt like the core gameplay of Madden was still behind what 2K Football had done. And compared to the PS2 Madden titles, 10 was missing a lot of depth and features. It was a decent game overall, but there was and is a lot to criticize. It's funny how things change over time. Now the game is remembered as something great. And you know what? Compared to Madden 22, Madden 10 actually feels like a deep, more fun game. But great games aren't great because they look good compared to bad ones. They have to be great on their own, and Madden 10 really isn't. It's crazy how far the series has fallen, and how our standards as a community seem to get lower and lower each and every year.
Thanks for watching.